Yolanda says, if I create a new plan, we're talking planner plans, uh, outside of a team channel using the planner app in the team's toolbar, is there a way to embed this plan in a team's channel after the fact? Uh, there is a difference in functionality between a plan created directly in the app versus creating it in team's channel, which is why people in my org want to do it this way. Thanks for your help. Okay. Got a few um, thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Um, because it depends. Sometimes it's that whole, you know, what type of channel is it? Because the workaround for the private or a shared channel, you the whole plan of functionality just yeah. kind of goes out the window. So you really do have to create externally and drop in that, you know, the web link or to your planet to be able to get its functionality and have it actually working. Um, but um, you know, yes, you can. You can actually embed it in. It's just a web URL adding to the tab. So you know, it's add tab website. Yep. Go and get before, the URL path. And re it remember too, historically, before we had the ability, like now, where you're in a plan and you create an item, a list item that's in a bucket, in a column, you can actually, um, you can of course drag and drop it and move it between the buckets in that plan, but you can actually then take that item and move it to another plan that you have access yeah. to, obviously, permissions. Like that, I, like before all that existed, your only option, and but it was was fine, was to say, I, I, I want to be able to see for this project, there might be three different project plans, you know, that are for different aspects of it that are separate, and I could have the tabs, and I could see them that way. And that's how I would add that kind of portfolio view. Obviously, it wasn't syncing it. Now you have, you still don't have the portfolio view, um, but um, to, to look across the multiple places to see at a high level and delivery of those things and percentage completed, that kind of stuff, which you need to have used project for to be able to do that. Um, but um, you do have the ability to have, if it's in the same uh, uh, you know, team, you, know, you can see the, the multiple plans and move yeah. things in between those. And then as an end user, of course, um, you'll, you're, you're able to see the roll-up of all your tasks across to-do, not what Yolanda is asking about, but. Um, well, the, I mean, the reason that she's putting the website in is when you're doing it from the actual planner app, it's an app, it's a light version of like the application, which is the full-blown version. If they're dropping in a, the website, then they're visually being able to see the full blurgeon, full blown version of the application. You say blurgeon, the browser. You blurgeon. Blurgeon. The word you it's a bit like that. Hey, it's still like seven in the morning here. Um, so up. what they're seeing is two different things. One's the kind of the app, one's the full blown application when they drop the website in, which is what they're going, we want to do it this way, but then it's, the nature of it is you're working in a browser inside the tab and it's not going to, uh, the functionality is not going to work quite as well because it's not the app. Full. And Kirsty, we're back to the same thing as that earlier question of it's not going right. to display. Now it doesn't yeah. display in that tab. So it's opening in a separate browser, which then is right. why wouldn't you just go to the planner app in the browser mm -hmm. if you want that full hub experience of working with all of the different plans that you have. This question though makes me wonder if this is a plan that is in a separate team. It's mentioning channel, but it's making me wonder because if it is if it is something that is for a separate, if it's just another channel of the team, you know, you can have multiple plans because they all belong to that Microsoft 365 group that's associated with the team, right? So if I were to go to a different channel of a team and then go to my add, add a tab and click on planner, I can choose from any of those existing plans that are part of that Microsoft 365 group. So you would be able to bring it in that way. The way this question is worded makes me wonder if someone created this in the planner app through the browser and it's not part of that team. So it's it's if you don't pick a group that you want it to be part of in an existing group, it's going to create a new group. So it may have a different Microsoft 365 group attached to it, which in that case, when you try to add it into that channel, if you're going through the add a tab planner app, it's not going to show up for you to be able to pick from it because there's not permissions for everyone in that team to work with it, right? If you bring it in like you're saying, Kirsty, where we do the add a website tab, and we take that link from the plan and we copy it and paste it in there, it's not going to display for those people if they're not a member of mm -hmm. that 
Microsoft 365 group and part of and that people plan. Coming so that going. Won't work either. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. you know, yeah. people coming and Which going is, all the time. It's like yeah. you're gonna constantly have you be having to manage, to manage individual permissions like you exactly. would if you've got a separate SharePoint or a separate yeah. Like how crazy yeah. is that? That's the reason we use the app, is because the app yeah. is just inherently gonna capture all the people within that security kind of group and you're separating yeah. it. And then when it comes to the emailing and all the other stuff that come with having another whole right, group and trying to find, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're creating a bit you of know, a mess. I'm actually the fan of the fact that, the, that you have both the native add a plan, as you said, if it's within mm -hmm. the, within that group, within that, that, that team, mm -hmm. you automatically see that natively I go and add that, but the ability to go and add SharePoint sites and third party tools and external websites and all those things. I mean, that was one of the things that day one with teams and I'm like, this is fantastic. I can put all the various pieces. Now you have to individually have permissions in each one of those things. In the early version two, every time you log out, log back in, you'd have to reestablish your permissions with each of the different locations, you know, the, the sites and the third party, the external stuff yeah. in each of those tabs as well. But, you know, as I'm sitting here working for several hours in the afternoon, all the tools that I needed that I have access to, I can have all lined up and I don't have to worry about by having that tab to a SharePoint site that I have access to, but none of you do. Right. Like it just, nothing would show up for you there. There's not a security breach, but I can, I, again, I, I really bought into that. You know, the the hub for work concept yeah. is, is perfect for that. So you do have well, multiple ways. Speaking of the hub for work, here's another approach to think of, and this might answer the question too, right? This could be just be a matter of maybe not everybody needs to see those different plans in those channels, right? Maybe we don't need to add them as a tab into the to that specific channel. This could be everybody has access to it. Another way you can get to it, speaking of hub, is is it the me work or the we work, right? The we work is setting all that stuff up in the channels of the team. The me work, if you go to your rail on the left side, if you go to the apps area there, there's a planner app that you can add, and that's going to be a different view because that's going to be more like the hub that you see when you go out to planner through the browser. It's going to show you all of the plans that you are an owner or a member of. It's going to show you your private, your personal to do tasks that you have there. So that gives you more of that experience as if you were going out to the planner app, but it's also the experience if you're going out to the separate to do app, it's just combining and bringing those two things into one place for you to be able to work with those. So that could be an approach too. instead of adding extra tabs that might become clutter because maybe most of the team doesn't need to get to that plan in that channel. Just have that in the rail of, of teams and that could be a, a great place for you to get to all of that. Yeah. Based on Yolanda's question, I would personally be saying start your planner from the tab at the app. So at least you know it's got the team, security, group, the right people. Yeah. And if you really want to have that view of the website version, then add, go to it, get the URL, and then add it in as a tab, remove the planner, and then put the planner with the website. So at least you know it's inheriting the team permission, unless, as you said, Heather, it's it's not about all of those people. Um, if it is about all those people, don't break it, don't create a whole new group mm -hmm. um, because it's going to get give you a real nightmare in the long run of people coming mm -hmm. and going over the period of time. So yep. start at least from there. But, you know, frankly, even if it is just the app, there's no reason why you can't just go open online and go view yeah. and work with it from online. I mean, you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah, and if it's, it's something there. that got created in that planner app and it truly is in a separate Microsoft 365 group, then the one that's associated with the team where they need to work with it, you can always go to the three ellipses, the more options for that plan in the planner app and copy that plan to the Microsoft 365 group that it needs to be in. And then you can pull it into those channels as a tab within the team. And then what I would say is just check to make sure everything is there and abandon that other one. Get rid of that other one as long as there's nothing in there that anyone needs so that there's not confusion between some are updating this plan yeah. that's not attached to the team, but we really wanna make it part of that team so that it's managed properly for the permissions. Yeah, you, when I see questions like this, it's usually they don't understand what's going on in the back end. They yeah. don't understand the difference between the different groups and what's happening because they're not understanding how a group is created in the first place in the likes of teams. And I usually yeah. start a lot of my education from what happens when you create a team. 
you know, yeah. and why and that push and pull of people being able to come out and the technology is automatically created for you. Um, and then if you go create a whole nother group, what's now happening? So it's yeah. usually that's why they're doing something like that as they often don't understand what's going on. Great. Right.